I'm rambling on and on. What do you think, guys? He was a fisherman. We talked about How many about minutes that? are we into this thing? 10, Ten minutes? <laughs> With bullet points. Oh. Why did you choose this topic? Tiff did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we had a little mental breakdown. <laughs> Screw the notes. For a minute. I think the notes were throwing me off. Oh, yeah. Stupid notes. Seriously, look, it's much more open now. How do you think my life has been my whole life? I never took notes. It's all right here, brother. Ah. Uh, <laughs> what? Seriously? I thought you were rolling. On this episode, we want to give a big shout out and hug and thank you to our good friend, Michelle Barron. She's an awesome friend. She's known us for a very long time, and she is a great title rep with Fidelity National Title. Um, she not only has an amazing personality and is super positive and a very strong business woman, but when things happen in our business, she gets it done. When issues pop up, she gets it done. She's world class. Hit her up for all your title needs. Michelle Barron, 562-244-3110. Hit her up. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? Good. How are you? Welcome back to Paul and Tiffany's podcast. This is our second episode. Very exciting times. Look at us. Okay, right, I'm going to leave the mic go. right there. All right, so what is our topic today? It's a big topic. Big topic. An amazing topic. Amazing topic. It's it's a way to hack the system. Yes. In buying a home for the first time. Yes. It's so expensive here. It is. So today we're going to talk about first-time buyers and how to hack affordability with mm -hmm. ADUs. ADUs? Yes. All right, let's go. Let's jump right in. You know, I've been talking, so... <laughs> As you know, sister, my first property I bought was a triplex. I lived in the front, ran in the back out. It was an FHA loan. Yeah. And I tell Sacrificed. every single first time buyer I think that I've ever met in my entire career the past 20 years, mm -hmm. I'd say, forget the single family residence, consider a duplex. Yeah. And this is before ADUs became easier to build mm -hmm. a few years ago in California. But, um, I really try to inspire everybody, plant a seed, open their eyes to a way to hack affordability. Yeah. So let's talk about- And they it. are harder to find though. I mean, you have to be patient, I feel like, to buy a good duplex if you're going to live in yeah, it. Yeah, duplex or house. Yeah. Yeah. I guess we should, let's start by, well, first of all, in research before this podcast, I did all this statistical research <laughs> on stuff, but tell I don't want to get too boring. Tell us the statistics. But this is a big one. I think if we're talking about first time buyers, we need to start with, okay, well, why buy number one? And uh -huh. what are the reasons for buying? And I think then we should jump into like how to specifically hack affordability how by to do it. Yeah. buying a house, turning, we'll talk about ADUs, we'll talk about junior ADUs, we'll talk about buying a duplex, we'll talk about buying two to four units mm -hmm. with little down and the advantages and opportunities a first time buyer has that current owners don't necessarily have, yeah. which I'm pumped about talking about. So um, I think this is a good topic because a lot of first time home buyers, I think, I think feel stuck and they don't know. They just like look at the interest rates and look the, at the, the prices yeah. and look at the payment and they freak out and they're like, yeah. oh, I'm never going to buy. 100%. Like, I'm going to travel and not buy a house. <laughs> I know there is some education that needs to happen. And I hope today after the goal of today, if they, if we could plant some seeds and give them kind of a framework for what are the opportunities when buying? Yes. You know, what does that all look like? And then make an educated decision on, okay, could I buy now? Should I buy? When I can do I buy? this. Yeah, I can yeah. do this. Inspire them to just think differently, perhaps, about mm -hmm. buying. Um, interesting statistic. If you had a guess, don't look at my paper. Okay. What is the current average net worth of a homeowner in the United States of America? Current net worth of, of a homeowner? Owner. A homeowner, I want to say, is roughly about... In the country. Oh, in the country? Yes, not California. Oh, uh, let's say 700,000. 400. 
Oh, wow. 700 is huge. Is it? I thought 400 was huge. Back in the day, it was like 200 grand, I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but still, 400K. Okay. Average renter net worth? Take a wild guess. Renter? Yep. Well, if it's 400, uh, 60,000? 10K. Oh, wow. So the average homeowner in the country has an average net worth of $400,000. Average renter has a net worth of $10,000. Okay, so tell it, because some people might not know what a net worth mean. Like, what does that mean? Oh, yeah, you take your assets minus your liabilities. That's what's left over. So, you okay. know, yeah. um, you own a house. It's worth a million dollars. You owe 500000 The equity you have in it is roughly 500000 Now, if you have loans... And debt of five hundred thousand, you know, five hundred thousand dollars in credit cards and yeah, bad debt. Then you deduct that five hundred from that, and your net worth would be zero. But um, assets minus liability. There's a really good game called Cash Flow. I recommend everybody to play, and it really huh. teaches you. They have a version for kids really? and adults, and it really teaches people what the difference between asset liability is. We should bring it to Easter. We should. I <laughs> think I have. A, I actually have it. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Oh, it'd right. be hilarious. But yeah. Yeah. Right. It'd be fun. Since we're going to be kids stuck, too. Since everyone thinks it's going to rain and like we're going to be bunkered out because we're Californians yeah, and sprinkles. we're not used to the rain. So, yeah. So, anyway, I want to start with the net worth number one because that is obviously a huge difference between the average homeowner versus renter. So yeah. That's, that's huge. Now, you take California, I'm sure that median net worth is higher potentially, mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't find that stat. Um, but anyways, I'm not going to, I don't get too kind of bogged down in the details. Or no, I'll, I'll do them really quick. I okay. think it's important. To your details. I think it's super important for our top 10 reasons, you know, that uh, top 10 reasons to buy a home, to own real estate. So I'm going to jump really quick. Okay. I'll chime in. Chime in so it's when not boring. I feel, yeah, I'll chime okay. in when you so see your bullet number points. Number one, our number one reason, uh -huh. um, obviously wealth and equity creation, right? Yes. Again, wealth isn't necessarily, we talked about this last time, it's not, you know, having all these fancy things and just being, you know, richy rich. Yeah. It's about having options, opportunities, being in a financial secure position freedom, to help yourself, your, your future self and yeah. family and friends potentially, right? Mm -hmm. um, it is whatever you want it to be. That's the beauty of wealth, of wealth creation. Yeah. And America, the American dream is to... Get here, build your life. And I think real estate is a huge component of the American dream. Pass it down to your kids. A big component of the American dream is buying real estate. Buying your first home is the is the first step mm -hmm. in the ladder of climbing that successful journey, building wealth, getting options, providing stability, security, dreams. I mean, people that have jobs, normal nine to five jobs that perhaps they get burn out in the job at some point in their life, or they don't like their job at some point in their life, or the home itself- They can fall back on that. Can be something to utilize, to mm -hmm. tap into, to leverage, to sell, to, um, you know, to use to help, you know, springboard their life. So it's I'm so pumped about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, first time buyers are, I really, I was thinking about this yesterday, actually. It's so gratifying. It is. There's nothing like it. Mm -mm. They're I so, love... they, they understand, they get it. They, clo they get it. It's such a amazing feeling, you know, versus the move up buyer. They know what's up. They know they're not. It's they're not, excited. It's not as, as exciting and fulfilling. I mean, it's yeah. fulfilling knowing that like you found them their house, but first time home buyers, the excitement on their face, like, They've accomplished something so huge, which maybe they thought they couldn't. Yeah, or maybe their family's never bought a house, right? Like we've yeah. had clients where like they're the first person in their entire, you know, family line to, to purchase buy the a first property. Home. Oh my gosh. It's a huge milestone and a huge Yeah, it's I just love it. Awesome to think about like being part of that. I also think about like our clients past 20 years. Think about the people we've sold houses years and years and years ago, right? Mm -hmm. How much equity growth they've had. Oh. And we're like a piece of that journey. Yeah. Like we're a small little piece. We help facilitate. We maybe planted a seed. We've connected with them. Stars aligned. You know, we help transition them into that I feel that like, property. yeah, all our clients have such an awesome story. I know. Um, we should probably talk to a couple of them. Well, I we'll think set up some the dates. The story behind the sale. They have such good stories. Yeah, it's really cool to be a part of that. Their first little step into uh, the real estate market. I think again, people will learn from these stories too. More yeah. than us just rambling on about things. I think, which is still fine and cool, and I enjoy I mean, it. That's kind of cool here rambling, but yeah. <laughs> to get deep down into their 
their story is awesome. I'm getting off topic. I'll so go let's quick keep through. going. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So first time home buyers, you got wealth Top creation. Top 10 reasons. Wealth creation, number one. Number two, obviously long-term financial security, you know, not only for, for you, but like your kids, your kids, kids, potentially like multiple generations, right? Yeah. Um, number three, it's a great hedge against inflation. You know, inflation is generally 2% per year on average, but obviously we've had inflationary times recently. Real estate is a great hedge against inflation. Real estate appreciates, it goes up in value. Mm -hmm. So just by owning that asset, you're helping with the rising cost of everything else around us. So it's a great hedge against inflation. There's obviously great tax advantages um, to owning real estate. Appreciation, mm -hmm. property goes up in value. Control and freedom, you know, renting, you really don't have control. Yeah. At any time, you get a notice potentially and you are not in control. And again, average home owner has that net worth of 400K, average net worth of a renter is 10K. Uh, number seven, leverage. Okay, you know, let's talk about like, like, okay, keep going. Let me just finish it was right, 10, keep going. top 10. <laughs> number eight is cash flow potential, depending on if you convert that house or home into a rental property once mm -hmm. you move on. Um, Nine, it's a built-in savings account. You know, it just, you making that payment, part of it's going to interest, part of it's going to principal, and little by little, you're like just saving money. I have money. a client we want, I want to talk about, but keep going. Okay, and then last is just stability. You know, family stability, and in that vein, I think there's also fulfillment that comes from mm -hmm. owning and, you know, family, um, you build your home. Yeah. You know, you build your home in your home. Your family is kind of base. So, um, yeah, those are top 10. Anyways, what client do you want to talk about? Okay, so I want to talk about one of our past clients that bought, it was his first property, bought a house. Which um, who, who's this? First name, I guess. Are we allowed to say names? I don't know. We're just, that's not that. <laughs> we, we haven't got their permission. Okay, we grew up with him. Okay. He's a runner. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, <laughs> <laughs> he runs the world. Okay, so bought his first house. Name, Taylor. Okay, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Um, he, detached garage, yeah. lived in the front. He lived with some roommates, single guy, um, made his garage an ADU, yep. rented that out. I think it like paid for most, maybe of, the mortgage, most yeah. of the mortgage. Then he decided, Hey, you know what? I want to travel the world and start running. Yeah. So he started doing marathons. He rented Ultra out his marathons. house. So now he was getting cash flow yeah. and he was able to travel around just running yeah and i think he at the time like i think he quit his job too so mm -hmm. he was able to like sustain a yeah. lifestyle just with purchase. the cash flow just with that one yeah. purchase building an adu he was able to like live his best life yeah now he came back he's back in the front house running out still the adu and mm -hmm. he's gonna do the same thing run out the front house and go travel again so yeah, I know. it's such a cool opportunity i think people don't understand how possible it is because well i think now because of the new law where you can build an adu um what's that law yeah there's multiple laws that pat they knew some signed um that went effect a couple of years ago making it very easy for cities statewide to allow for adus and junior adus mm -hmm. yeah so that's why we like to push buying a single family residence with a detached garage because you can easily separate it and yeah. build that adu for sure and help your payments so look someone buys a seven hundred thousand dollar house or payments 5500 bucks a month right mm -hmm. get this so you know the 50 grand down they got to convert the adu maybe the adu cost 25 to 50k mm -hmm. right maybe 100 grand it really depends. They hire a general contractor. They're going to charge them an arm and a leg. They sub it out themselves. They work as a owner builder, which I recommend, even though it's a pain in the butt. They're going to save a lot of money. It really mm -hmm. depends on the person's circumstance, how much resources they have. Do they have an extra 100 grand laying around to afford the ability to hire a GC? Yeah. Do they not? Do they have to get scrappy and figure out where to find money under the couch mm -hmm. to make it happen? Bottom line is, we're in America here. This is like entrepreneurial country. They got to figure it out. Got to make it happen. If yeah. this is good, it's good, the gateway that's going to help them build their life exit the rat race of life, then they got to figure it out, right? Yeah. So check it out. <laughs> you buy SFR, you convert the garage to an ADU, right? Your payment's 5,500 bucks a month at a 700K purchase price, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Convert the garage. You're renting the thing out for two grand to $2,500, depending on where it's located. They're basically living there for like three to 3,500 bucks a month. Yeah. Okay. Let's add a little bonus on top of that. They're what's called junior ADUs, which is a 
allowed accessory dwelling unit within the existing home up to 500 square feet that the city will allow you, the state basically will allow you to convert as a rentable unit so long as you live there as your primary residence. So if there's like a back room, that's yeah. kind of feels like it's like, it could be away from the house. Yeah, I remember a client bought a house in Montebello. They had a living room. It was basically, I think about a three bedroom, two bath normal house. Yeah. Then there was like a step down living room addition at some point in the past. They did. They added a wall. Okay. And they, they closed the door. I mean, the door from the main house to yeah. the step down. Closed it up. Added a little kitchen. Hmm. Added its own access from the outside. Rented it out. Bringing in two grand a month. So wow. that's a junior ADU. And it could be up to 500 square. So think about like a 1500 square foot house, thousand square feet you live in, 500 square feet you chop off and create a junior ADU. So that's unit number one. Unit number two could be like a, in a perfect world. So a, a perfect model would be like a 13 to 1500 square foot home mm -hmm. that has some existing small little space that you can convert. 200 to 400 square mm -hmm. feet ish, up to 500 square feet. You convert that very easily. The caveat mm -hmm. is though that, that like you're living, I wouldn't want that in my neighborhood. Yeah. Your neighborhood, or you, as a homeowner, you wouldn't want to live with with tenants next to you, or oh. I don't know either, because there'd be uh, extra cars on the street. Yeah, I know. There's so there's certain areas yeah, yeah, that yeah. you'd have to like we'd show our clients. That's a free country, though, man. If if I'm living next to you, and I want to do that. It's, guess what? I get to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll just but put we're a talking about zone. hacking affordability for the first time buyer, making it more affordable for these people to yes. get in and not have. You know this huge payment of whatever. $6, also, too, first-time home buyers get qualified. Um, the numbers larger if it's a duplex. Duplex, yeah. I want to get into that, but let me look tell you okay. these numbers really quick. It's a, kind of mind blowing. So let's just say they did the garage conversion. You buy a house, you do the with a detached. Now we keep saying detached two-car garage for multiple reasons. Obviously, if you just visualize a separate structure, yeah, as a unit, you could easily kind of create their own yard, Different maybe some space. fences, yeah and mm -hmm. create its own little world, right? Yeah. So that's gonna drop your payments significantly, two to 25 bucks a month, you're paying about three that's grand a huge. month. Adding the junior radio, let's just say you get two grand a month for that. You're living there for a thousand to 1500 a month. And then you've just made a triplex. So in this model, you basically a little bit, hundred grand no debt in income. So if you make, you know, you got 50 grand, first of all, if you have like 50 K ish and you're north of a hundred grand, greater LA, let's say, this model could work for you potentially. And then it, they could refinance, they rent could, out all the three units, and then move and do it again. The other thing, too, with the tax benefits of owning. So here's the crazy thing. Like, in addition to reducing their monthly costs by having either a junior ADU and an ADU or mm -hmm. just an ADU, like whether it's just one junior ADU or it's one detached ADU or even an attached ADU. It doesn't have to be detached. We keep yeah. saying... We keep saying two car detached garage. It could be an attached two car garage or attached one car garage. Doesn't really matter. Whether they have one ADU within the structure or two ADUs in the structure or outside the structure, doesn't matter. In addition to reducing the cost by that rental income, they still have write offs for interest, write offs for taxes, write offs for mortgage insurance, write offs for points of the mortgage. Because that's the rental property. No, just as a homeowner, actually. Oh. Just as a homeowner. Um, they have that ability to write off. So all of a sudden, in addition to reducing their cost by having this multi-unit property they've created, they've got interest write off So renting, you don't have that luxury. You don't get the write-offs when you're renting. When you're renting, you're throwing money into the wind. Oh, yeah. You're burning that money. You might as well just burn it, right? Just live with mom and dad. Yeah. Just live with your mom and dad. Yeah, keep your expenses as little as possible and <laughs> exactly save that money to, to be able to buy. But what's cool is when you take all these benefits of owning – and it actually, cause there's, you know, there's this thing like it's cheaper to buy than rent. And that's so sure. true in this yeah. instance. I mean, yes, the down payment is the barrier for most people mm -hmm. starting out, right? They may have good jobs, but you know, to save up 50 K for some people is tough. Yeah. But the upside is so huge. There's lots of ways to do it. We have a client that ended up buying with a friend of his. He was a co-borrower. So on a single family residence, let's back up just a tad. Cause there is a lot to chunk down to break down the most important elements a buyer should be aware of when they're buying for the first time. Oh, okay, go ahead. But you can have on a single family residence, a non-occupant co-borrower. So in mm -hmm. our case, our friend has a friend, you know, he was trying to qualify by himself. He needed a little more income. And he ended up buying with a buddy of his who has a good job and is a current homeowner out of state. And he 
basically just uses income. <clears throat> yeah, they're buying it together. And yeah. they worked out a deal, you know, and that's a whole nother conversation on what the terms of that kind of partnership could look like. Let's yeah. not get into that. But bottom line, he, where there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. At first he was gonna see if his mom could qualify for him with him to, to do something together. That didn't pan out perfectly just yet. Could in the future though. Mm -hmm. um, and his friend, they ended up buying it together and they worked out a deal. So it's awesome. There's so many ways to do it. Yeah. But you have a non-occupant co bar So let's say you need a little extra bump. Um, now with units, you can't have that non-occupant co borrower but you can have- a And units, you only need 5% <clears throat> down now, right? Yeah, two to four units, 5% down, which That's is huge. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, before you needed to- 20, 25% yeah, down? Yeah, larger down payment. Mm -hmm. And there, there was this ratio, they, their rental income on three to four units, um, on the units you were not gonna be occupying, that rental income had to cover the entire mortgage to, for you to qualify. Yeah, that's crazy. They remove that and now basically 5% down conventional loan. And the thing about units is great. And I think you asked me earlier, they'll take 75% of the income or projected income from the units you're not living in and add it to your own income. So it might be easier to qualify for some people for an eight, nine, eight to $900,000 duplex than it is like a $700,000 house yeah. because of the additional income the lender is going to give them to add on top of their income. That's awesome. Not to mention the numbers. Check this out. That's so, what I would do if I was single. Let's look at the numbers on a duplex. So on a duplex, let's say you were to buy something for 800000 payment 6200 bucks a month. Let's say you rent out the front for 3K, you're living there for three grand a month, you do a garage conversion, bring in 2,500 bucks, you're living there for 730 bucks a month. Yeah. That's not including, by the way, um, any other upside that the duplex potentially has. For example, you could do a double ADU on some duplexes. So there's just so much opportunity. So if yeah. there's a will, there's a way, this is the way, I taught a class that says screw the SFR, SFR by two to four. This is yeah. before the ADU laws made it easier to build ADUs. Was that like during um, Buyers and Brews? Oh yeah, we did Buyers and Brews too. And that was part of the topic. One of the topics oh, yeah. was Buyers and Brews. I know, that was a cool thing, right? Yeah, Buyers and Brews. Yeah, buyers and Brews. But is there a healthier version of that we could do? We could have non-alcoholic beer. We could have mocktails. Yeah. Buyers, buyers and Brews. And it's not catchy though, right? Buyers and Brews, but it could be like coffee, brews. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm digging that. We could have like Let's local roasters or like local. We could do it with somebody local, like flight. local fixture. I mean, not flight. What's yeah, that coffee fixture. place you go to all the time? Lift. Lift. Yep. Local fixture. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. All right. We should do that. Let's do it. Bars and Let's brews. Coffee. We could have coffee, beer, not alcoholic beer, matcha. mocktails, matcha. All right. That'd be fun. Cool. Yeah. So what else? What else about this SFR? Forget the SFR, buy the two to four. What yeah. was it? Yeah, funny. Oh, so in, initially I said, I've told every single first time buyer, guess the percentage of people that actually do this though? One. One percent? I know, let me think. <laughs> in 20 years, I to a thousand people. Of the thousand people, I can think of like five people that did it. But I think it's now- It's such a small percentage. Because <laughs> it's like, it's it's big. Mm. It's To me, it's not. It's not, it's literally something I was dreaming about since before I got into real estate. Because you've done it and you well, know it's- Maybe it's because- it, You can do it and it's- Well, it's because maybe we saw family do it or yeah. I don't know why, but to me, it's just, it just seems the it's a no brainer path for yeah. somebody. I just didn't want to ever have a huge mortgage, even in the, I mean, ever. I wanted to be able to reduce that cost and hack the system and buy a rental property and know, it. you know, my goal was to like buy my first rental property and then use owner, that's the thing we talk about. Okay. Owner occupied financing. This is like so important for people to know. When you're starting out, maybe your kids are small. Maybe you have no kids. Maybe you're never gonna have kids. Maybe you have kids. Maybe you have small kids. Once they reach <laughs> like five, six, seven, eight ish, whatever the age is, where they yeah, need a backyard, need you kind of want them to have some space, backyard, uh -huh. kind of the normal, you know, suburban cookie cutter home in a nice yeah. neighborhood, safe to walk around, no big deal. You know, there comes a point. And for us anyways, where I was like, okay, we need to like stop jumping from these little investment properties into a normal house. Mm -hmm. My goal originally was to like do it 10 times. So buy my first property, cash flow thousand to 2000 a buck, you know, a month. Once I, you know, live there for a couple years, cause you gotta- You started too late. <clears throat> yeah, started too late. <laughs> we made a bunch of money, blew a bunch of money and you're way ahead of me. Didn't we? No. Yeah. Now? No, with oh. the, when you started. <laughs> you're like, no, not now. <laughs> Yeah. I should probably turn my garage into an uh, ADU. Remember you said, not my backyard though. You don't want that. 
I know. <laughs> no, I'm double guessing. It's far. I could put a fence and then move. What it's do you think? so important for people to realize the window of time they have is short. Yeah. And it's worth the energy, the risk. It's definitely the, worth the risk. It is 100% worth the risk. See, for me, it was financial freedom. I didn't want to ever work ever again. I want to have the option to not work. And I love work. I'll always work. But to be able to have, I, you know, I teach this class and I say, raise your hand. Like there's 50 people in a room. And I say, if you got, by show of hands, if you could have your cash flow from real estate investments, cover your monthly living expenses, mm -hmm. whether those living expenses are $5,000 a month, $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, who'd be interested? Everyone Every single their, person yeah. raises their hand. That tells me that people do inside have this desire, this dream, the idea yeah. of having that freedom, financial freedom is something I think every single human wants. Yeah. But it's not taught in schools. This isn't the type of education people learn unless they seek it themselves. They get lucky to have a mentor, they have family, mm -hmm. they have some sort of interaction with somebody. Yeah, usually it's like nine to five, <clears throat> nine to five yeah. work, save your money, but it's, I guess it's easier than that. Which is actually interesting too. I mean, mm -hmm. in the book, The Millionaire Next Door, it did analysis of all the millionaires in the country. And surprisingly, a lot of them, very small percentage are like the glitz and glam, driving Ferraris, eating caviar. Most are like driving Fords, mm -hmm. engineers, teachers, doctors, uh, normal people, like nothing, you know, a lot of teachers, um, they have nine to five jobs. They're really smart with their money. They bought a home, they bought another home, they bought another investment, they invested in this, invested in that. They're yeah. very conservative. You would never know from the outside that they had, you know, were multimillionaires, but um, that was an interesting book. Wow. It, yeah. What is it called? It, it's called The Millionaire Next Door. It was written years Millionaire ago, The Millionaire Next Door. Next Door. These days, everything you see on Instagram, you know, all the social media things, like the the young kids are lured, um, even like the real estate shows, they're, they're lured by the glitz and glam the of, yeah. the, of the- Of the fakeness. Of the small, the percentage of, let's call it wealthy people that actually live like that is probably under Tiny. one to five percentile, yeah. maybe 10 percentile. I mean, not For even sure. that, probably one to 5%. Yeah. But I guess my back to the whole plan with me, I wanted to, you know, my goal is to rinse and repeat, buy one, live there. Cause you have to live in the house. You can't just use owner occupied financing and, and, and not live there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's like lender fraud. So yeah. you live in the property, got to live there for a year or two, live in the property, rent it out. And I always wanted to project, okay, once I move out of this property, if I can cash flow a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to do that. Let's say 2000 was the number, right? Yeah. And then, okay, I live there for two years, buy another one. Number two, that's four grand. Number three, six grand. Number four, eight grand. Number five. So my goal is to do like five to 10 times, then get a normal house. But then June and Grace were too old. Yeah. And, you know, and that was COVID and we had no but backyard. Do, I mean, you've done <laughs> super well. You've done it. A couple of times. But I guess my point mm -hmm. is the path is literally even, people are like, everything's so expensive. People are like, it's so expensive here. How do you buy? I'm like, no, you can hack it. Here's the number. Look at Buy for some 700 grand. Get, I mean, you have to have the cap. Let's see. 700 grand down. I mean, 700 grand price. So that's get the down payment. You need convert 50K. the garage. Figure out how to convert the garage. Live there for three grand a month. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Build the junior ADU. That's two grand a month. So now you're going to be cash flowing $2,000 per month. If you did a junior ADU and ADU garage inversion on this 700K example, mm -hmm. now this is not factoring the actual capital needed to do the garage conversion and do the junior ADU. However, let's just figure, let's assume they figured it out. Okay. They figured out how to get creative. I'll never forget the story about Mark Bullen. Who? Mark, the owner of uh, um, Artisan Building, where oh, my yeah. first real estate office was. Such a, smart guy. What'd he do? His dad, you know, he worked for his, his dad was a real estate guy. He worked for his dad for a long time and ended up going on his own and building this huge like empire. Okay. But he learned by, his dad will buy a big warehouse and say, hey, I have no money, figure out how to add value. So he would literally just figure out with no budget how to like trade stuff, buy stuff, barter with people. And he created value in the building. He created, he upgraded the building. He created value from nothing. Like for so think about that. Imagine you had you were forced to just figure out how to create value with no budget. So my yeah. point is you can get entrepreneurial. You can get resourceful. You can figure things out. You can yeah. figure out how to make it happen. So in this instance Sometimes though, I feel like I need to do that. Like I need to pretend like I'm by like everyone's depending on me and I just need to figure it out. <laughs> oh, you feel the urge to Yeah. Yeah. To do it? Anyways, that's besides the point. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, you got to explore that urge. I know. That urge is inspired from God, 100%. Yeah. Inspiration in spirit that comes from somewhere else. And I, that, that's what I believe. Totally. You feel a spirit, a feeling, a motivation. That's something telling you. Yeah, there's something. This higher you. self, something inside that's making you inspired to. But you got to act on that inspiration. I know. Mm -hmm. Just to figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. All right, anyways. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so... What else? What about out of state? You know, I, I try not to like talk out of state because I don't, you know, we don't do it. And that's true. I'm going to though. Yeah. Do it. In Tennessee. Just gonna buy a cute little house there. A lot of people moving out there. Airbnb. A lot of people are moving out there. We sh that's a that's what we should do. Your focus is obviously California. You have a bunch of rentals, you build, you do all kinds of stuff here. I think we should like I'll do the other way. Like, I'm going to just do Airbnbs out of state. I want to do Airbnbs too, though. But you want to do them here. Oh, yeah. In California. I think eventually, though, like, let's say you build a portfolio here in California. For me, I like to keep going to California. I think there's so much opportunity I see yeah. every single day. But at some point, I think it would be, you know, maybe wise to potentially look out of state. Mm -hmm. Just not like, have I'm all thinking your eggs like Monopoly, you know, like when you're playing the game. Mm hmm. You're like in different states, mm -hmm. and then like one in Tennessee will be two hundred thousand, and then you buy another one next to it, another two hundred thousand. Yeah, and then another one that's six hundred thousand. I think it and then here you, buy. Just you buy just buy one. For the thing is, yeah, no, I get you. I mean, there's I met this cop in Bell Gardens who was from your Belinda. He was a cop in Bell Gardens. He started buying houses, I think, in Ohio and somewhere in the Midwest. Like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, with a lot of his buddies, they'd buy mm -hmm. them for like 80 grand, 100 grand, 120 grand, 150 yeah, grand. Yeah, I feel like that's my calling. And they would make like a 10% return on their cash, very low debt, very yeah. safe. Um, you know, I mm -hmm. think with that comes different challenges, you know, not really understanding the local rental market unless yeah. you have family there and maybe vacancies are higher than they are here. No, just Airbnbs. Yeah. There's so many ways to, to jump in. This is just motivating me to buy another night. So the Airbnb thing is interesting. You know, on vaca locally, like vacation property, like you think of Arrowhead, like uh, the desert. Yeah, we're going to do Arrowhead. You think Arrowhead or the desert, uh, I've done the math, and it seems like other than the down payment, the thing should pretty much take care of itself. You have a free vacation home. Yeah. But you need a down payment. Yeah. And if you do really well, potentially you get a little more, you know, you you maybe make a return in addition to just having a free rental and that covers the mortgage with your 20% down. That would be ideal. Um, 15 to 20% down, I think you could maybe do a little better depending on the location and you know how you dial it in. But um, yeah, I mean. All right, so we, we did it. We talked about first time home buyers, how to hack the market and jump in. Yeah, the duplex too. I mean, the duplex is insane. You, you basically do the calculations with the duplex. You're living there for free basically. You're giving cash flow. In some instances with a duplex, you literally buy the duplex, you do the ADU thing, you're yeah. living there. And you're cash flowing. You're living there for free and you're making like two grand a month potentially. Yeah. And you just yeah. rinse and repeat that over and over and over again until, so that's why first time buyers have this sweet spot of opportunity. Like, hey, you first can First time home buyers without kids, I feel like that is a great thing to do for a month. Even small kids. I mean, well, come yeah, babies, on. Babies. You know, just make it happen. Up it's for your like family's three. future. Up to like Make three. five moves. I think five moves within like, f if you want to make, literally five, think about this. I think your goal is you want to make a thousand to two thousand dollars per deal. It's going to be an owner occupied. You're going to live there, right? If you want to be very extreme, you could literally let's call it eighteen months. Twelve months is too quick. Mm -hmm. Eighteen months. Every eighteen months, you could move, maybe three to four times. Let's say four times. You make a thousand to two thousand per. So it's four to eight k. Let's call it six grand, seven grand a month in five moves. It's probably going to be more than that, but let's say seven grand a month, five moves. Mm -hmm. Now you buy this house. Your payment's six k a month. Your cash yeah, flow covered. from the investments covers the house payment. Yeah. You have zero house payment. You know what I'm thinking? So every dollar you make, imagine this, every, cash flow covers everything in your life, right? Mm -hmm. Every dollar you make an active income with your job or whatever you do to make a living, every single dollar could either go towards buying down your debt, buying other investments. Think how fast you would- I think this is a good plan. What are we called? Are we a millennials? Are we X, Bs? I don't know, or? X, generation G, D, B, Z, millennial. But what's our next, like- Generation X is the next one after. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I think this is a good plan for Generation X because they're very like they want to travel. They want, yeah, they want their travel own. the world. They want 
freedom. They, they need don't, freedom. They, don't, they yeah, want freedom, they freedom, they freedom. Work this is a perfect. It is, 100%. Interesting. True. That should be like our thing. Thing. Yeah. Are you Generation Z? <laughs> well, call me. Well, the know? cool thing is with people, instead of like explaining all this to them, we literally send a link to the podcast. Like, hey, listen to this. Oh, yeah. Listen to this. So, what did we not cover that we need to cover for first time buyers related to ADUs? We talked about ADUs, junior ADUs. We talked about buying two to four units with only 5% down now, which down is huge. Down payments. Yeah. Down payments. I just want to hit home with these first time buyers. Like, this is such a small window of opportunity. Like, time goes on, you get more established, you have kids, they're a certain age, you're not going to want to bounce around and like, no. So it's just a mindset shift. Hey, these are investments. I'm going to house hack and, yes. and use this. Because here's the other thing. Let's say you want to buy your first investment property. Let's say you didn't do this. You buy a normal house, you know, and like you, for example, if you want to buy an investment property, 25%, I me too. I mean, if I want to buy an investment property, yeah. assuming you're not partnering with somebody, you're buying a super killer deal where you can, but just traditionally, let's just say you want to buy an investment property. 20, 25% down. Mm -hmm. So let's say you buy an investment for a million bucks, you need $250,000 cash to yeah. buy that property. A million dollars. Right now, a first time buyer can buy a duplex for a million bucks, triplex for a million bucks, put as little as three and a half to 5% down, 30 to $50,000 down, and That's buy huge. that investment property that is A, gonna produce cash flow, B, set them up forever do all these things with $50,000. Mm -hmm. So it's such a huge opportunity. It's a no-brainer. Yeah. It's a no-brainer. It really it's is. It's a no-brainer. Got to jump in. Mm -hmm. First time home buyers. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah, and my tips are always this. Yeah. This is my personal strategy. I know people that have made a lot of money in funky areas. You know, they've made a killing over the years, but everyone has their own personality. Me personally, I like buying in good neighborhoods, things with strong rental markets where I know I'm going to get good rent. Southeast LA. Yeah, I love Southeast LA. I love, we're giving away our secrets now. Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Whittier. No, we're good. At LA. Southeast LA County, Whittier, North Orange County is pricey, but there's some pockets there. Yeah. But bottom line, it doesn't matter. Like, this applies to literally anywhere. It doesn't anywhere. matter. Just do it. No, this applies to anywhere in the world. Like buy a good location, buy a good neighborhood, something with upside. Mm -hmm. You're going to have great tenants. Homes are going to appreciate more. The other cool thing about buying the house though and converting it to like a triplex, let's say, or a duplex, like by the ADU, via ADU, those houses are actually typically in better neighborhoods than multifamily neighborhoods. So typically you have That's duplexes true. and triplexes and fourplexes. Yeah. Not all the time, but like you'll have them surrounded by other multifamily. Yeah. So, you know, technically that neighborhood is not going to be as desirable, desirable as a single, as a single family single residence family. neighborhood. Mm -hmm. With So that's the other benefit, I think, going the SFR route and creating your duplex and triplex. Yeah. Um, you know, so... Yeah, I mean, I get awesome. so pumped about it, and I really get excited when I meet people that are like, "Yes, I'm going to do this." Like, yeah, Carlos is an example. He's like, "Yes, I'm going to do it." This and the couple plan. that we just Taylor is doing it himself. Mm -hmm. He's living, breathing example of living the American dream. He has this asset, this property he purchased years ago. It's got a boatload of equity. He has an ADU. It's something that brings him income that yeah. literally affords him to be able to like not work, travel, the world. travel the country, yeah. be a Hopefully, a professional runner one of these days. It looks like he's getting he's there. Killing he's it. Killing it. Jeez. Um, it's just awesome. Have you seen that movie yet? I want more. I want more Taylors oh. and Carlos's like hitting us up. Like, hey guys, I heard your podcast. Or like, you know, we yeah. gotta send this out. And Taylor, I want... Carlos, if you see this, <sighs> referrals. Yeah, just refer kidding. us your <laughs> business. Not kidding. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, not kidding. That movie I told you guys to watch. That was good. I watched it last night. You did? Yeah, it was so did good. you cry? I didn't cry. No. Oh. But it was good. Did I you like it? Cry. I teared up. I teared up a little bit. Yeah. How this inspiring. Yeah, really inspiring. Really that inspiring. That just inspires movie. like in anything in life. Just like go and do it. Yeah. The only thing that's stopping you is you. Is you. Yep. That's a good quote. Yeah, there you go. The only thing that's stopping <laughs> you is you. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I like say positive quotes like that. And then I'm like, yeah. There you go. Do you? No. You I write do? them down though. I write down a lot. Oh, I, I have all the I have a index cards of Motiv like every motivational thing that stuck out to me, whether it's like motivational quotes or do you read insights. them? Do you go back and read them? I literally have three by five note cards in my desk drawer with and like you read a, them. I literally have them. Like I probably look at them at least, well, at least a couple times a month. Really? Yeah. Like for the past maybe since 2016. Are you serious? Yeah. Like an index ring. The thing is, like when you re-reference 
insight, wisdom, motivational quotes, things that yeah. you feel deeply connected to and you're reminding your subconscious conscious mind and subconscious your conscious mind, mm -hmm. which will then go into your subconscious mind. You will create, you will become yourself. Everything you, your being will become in alignment yeah, totally with that. the things that you're putting into your mind. Yeah. So I'm a I fanatic a when board. it comes to that I guess I need to start writing things down. <sighs> I'm really bad at that. It depends. I mean, we all have our own way of living life. I mean. <laughs> you're so structured. You know I mean? Everyone's different though. I mean, that uh, brings me joy. That might not bring you joy. I'm not that structured. I'm structured with the things I have to be structured with. Am I sure? You are structured. Your whole garage is like perfect. It's not that perfect. Could Have you be seen our garage? I guess that's what happens when you like marry someone that's like you, like like yourself, like artsy. You and, you and your wife are care are super structured, like organized to the T. And me and my husband are just like, bleh. You I got a beautiful like life, Tim. You've, you've got a beautiful thing going. No, it's different though, right? I mean, it's it's like um, interesting. Anyways, besides the point. So what else did we miss with this topic? We covered everything, right? We covered Junior everything. Junior ADUs, ADUs. Cover, you know, first time homebuyers, if you're listening, I hope you're writing down the things that <laughs> stood out to you. Yeah. So you could remember how easy it is to uh, jump on in. Mm -hmm. Not easy. No, it's not easy. It sounds easy. It, it actually- There's tools. It actually is easy. Um, it's easy to find. Well, it's simple, not easy. That's, yeah. It's simple. That's the process, everything we're talking about is simple. No, yeah. And there's a lot of unknowns and things. Um, also, it's like you have to find the right agent that will have patience to help you get there. I think one other safety net on the technical side of the things, the information that's important for them to know, you always have to calculate total payment. Let's say in this case, it's $6,000 a month. I mean, there's so many factors. Like once the property goes up in value by 20%, they could refinance and remove the mortgage insurance, which might be in this instance, three, 400 bucks a month. But yeah. again, rates would have to drop things. That, bottom line is this though, let's say the payment is $6,000. If they could bring in, let's say seven, $8,000 on that asset long-term, or even if they could at the very least break even 6K mm -hmm. a month, right? Whether that property goes down from a million, $700,000 value. Oh yeah, we didn't even talk about the upside they're creating and appreciation by the conversions. See, there's so much to talk about. Jump right in. So they do, well, bottom line, they fix it up and depending on how much they put into it, let's say they put in- <laughs> I really in, want to interrupt. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's go say they put in seven, yeah, they're in a 750, let's say they're 800,000, it's probably worth a million bucks. So they instantly made 200 grand. <laughs> so now they can probably refinance, get rid of the mortgage insurance, drop their payment. Now their cash flow gets increased and they're living there mm -hmm. just printing money. The, just printing. Our client <laughs> recently, sorry, I'm, I'm going to cut you off because it just- it was yeah, so what? funny that you just kept ram rambling on and you talk so fast. I know, too fast, huh? And mom also talks like super fast. And our client was like, Paul's a lot like your mom. Like, I mean, like, they're just going like full throttle on the phone and they just, can't, like, they talk so fast. And then I'm kind of like, squirrel. And I'm like, oh my gosh, me too. <laughs> When they're rambling on, oh, yeah. I get the nuggets. Right, right. And he's like, I could, I could see how. Uh, well, you know what's cool with this podcast? People right. get like, you know, you know, when you listen to something, you can actually slow down the audio. You can speed you up can? and slow down depending on the like the app you're listening to. Yeah, you can like slow down the audio. And then they'd be like, <laughs> "This is why it's important yeah. to." Oh, cool. <laughs> so we talked about everything. I think we missed. We cut. I think we talked about everything. Hold on, let's, there's got to be more. <sighs> <laughs> we did, did we talk about we talked about everything for her first time home buyer there's so much i think patience is a big one um not giving up if your offer doesn't get accepted the first couple times especially in this market i think also just this is a kind of very basic tip but like well, i don't know if you're in our area obviously we're here to help you but let's say you're listening and you're somewhere else I think if you're going to embark on a journey like this, you definitely link up with a realtor who has experienced themselves, ideally, in 100%. doing this type of thing because yeah. there are nuances. And, you know, just like with anything, if you have a wise mentor who's been there, done that, it's going to shrink the time of, you know, no experience to experience mm -hmm. tremendously. It's going to save you time, money, energy, headache. And yeah, you don't want to hire someone that yeah. 
the value of that know. is more than a commission, by the way. 100%, I mean, having yeah. an, a person like that, not just in real estate as a realtor, but like that could go for a CPA, an attorney, any professional, doctor. I mean, any professional in whatever field, architect, it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter. Any true professional that is the best of the best that has experience in doing whatever it is you're trying to do is is the wisest way to, to move forward and plan and execute things. Right? Yeah, for sure. So cool. I think I think that was such like good more. information. I feel like there's more. There's always more. But that but then tune in for season three. Mm -hmm. Is it season or episode? E uh, episode. episode. Episode three of Paul and Tiffany. Yeah. Uh, okay. So right. I want to well, make sure we, that's it. It's a Paul, I think we're good. Tomorrow's Easter. It's chill. It's raining. Gotta go get my Easter outfit. I think we're good. So you're cutting me off, is what we're saying. <laughs> cutting me off. <laughs> Uh, are you gonna go golf in that shirt? No, but I felt it was very Easterish. Oh, it is very Easterish. I went very like gloomy. I didn't like what I was wearing last podcast, so I felt like let's give it a little speckle of black and white. Mm -hmm. But now I'm thinking I should go like bright. I like that. I do. Oh, I'm joining the tennis club at the country club. Nice. Yeah. It's very nice, fun. Tiff. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> You said you wanted, you thought there was more. Oh. Just telling you what Related I'm to. Related to first time buyers at ADUs. <laughs> <and careers. laughs> okay. So I think we've covered it. What do you think? Really? First time buyers. I think we covered it. Yep. Down payment. We talked about closing this, that, hacking. Yeah. Hacking the system. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. And if we didn't, if, if anybody else has a question, they can, is there like a comment remark? They can find us. Go to website, pawntiffany.com. Yeah. Pawn, call Instagram, Facebook. Okay. That's a wrap. <laughs> done? That's a wrap. Done and done. Done and done. All right. It's been a pleasure. We made it. That was weird. <laughs> Let's do it again. All right. <laughs> All right.